Today we come to Psalm 105. We begin our study in verse 1, and we will go, let's see, we will go through verse 36. And Lord, we ask that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 105, verse 1. Give thanks to the Lord. Call on His name. Make known among the nations what He has done. The world needs to hear who the real God is and what He has done and what He will do so that they, at least some of them, at least those who are hungry for truth, will leave their sin and their devotion to other things and other so-called gods and serve the Lord God. And if we who know the Lord do not tell the world who the real God is and what He has, lo- what he has done and what He is like, no one will because no one knows. Verse 2, Sing to Him Sing praise to Him. Tell of all of His wonderful acts. And God's wonderful acts refer to His miraculous, supernatural activity. And we're supposed to tell people about that stuff. And people like to hear about supernatural things. One reason science fiction is so popular is because it is on the same lines as supernatural. The Bible says that God has placed eternity in the heart of man. That's why there's that hunger for something beyond this world. And so science fiction can sometimes be a substitute for spiritual things. But we who know God, we who know the Lord, have a whole book full of supernatural stories true stories and not only do we have the Bible that is filled with things that God has done we probably also have some personal experiences concerning God to talk about verse 3 glory in his holy name let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice glory in his holy name And name doesn't just refer to title, something that he has called. The name refers to the entire person. Glory in the person of God is what he is saying. In other words, be happy that you have a God like God. If you like good, you cannot do better than Almighty God. You can glory in him brag on him he never lets you down he does wonderful things he will never embarrass you by doing something foolish 4 look to the Lord and his strength seek his face always takes effort to seek something the word seek means means to you know put some effort some time into something I'm not talking about something that happens necessarily right away and it takes effort to draw close to God it really does it takes effort to pray hard and to pray long and to read his word but the rewards are great when you seek God and you get a taste of God you will want to seek him even more. Verse 5, Remember the wonders he has done, his miracles and the judgments he pronounced. Remember remember these things about God, his miracles, his judgments, his wonders. Memory is such an amazing gift that God has given man. And our memory is best used when we remember our God how good he is what great things he has done 
His righteous decrees. If we sense our devotion to God slipping away or our love for Him wavering, then we should take the time to remember Him. Because if we do, we will soon appreciate Him again. Can't help but appreciate God when you remember Him. 6. O descendants of Abraham, His servant, O sons of Jacob, His chosen ones. And read this in the context of remembering, because He's speaking to the descendants of Abraham. He's talking about God's chosen people. Israel in the Old Testament, Christians in the New Testament. If no one else uses their memory to think about God, we who are being saved sure should. Verse 7, He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. God executes His judgments upon all people all over the entire world. And He wants to save all people, to spare all people from His holy wrath. His judgments are in all the earth. But he doesn't want to condemn anybody, anyone. Christians must never think that they are a member of an exclusive club. In a sense they are because they're in a family of God. But no Christian should ever think that, well, God likes us more than those people in the world. That's not true. He cares for all. Verse 8, He remembers His covenant forever. The word He commanded for a thousand generations. We are told to remember God. And we are told that He remembers us. He remembers His covenant with us. The covenant He made with Abraham, the oath He swore to Isaac. He confirmed it to Jacob as a decree, to Israel as an everlasting covenant. To you I will give the land of Canaan as the portion you will inherit. And so, we are told to remember God in verse 5 but you know there would be really no point in us remembering God if God did not remember us and especially his covenants with us through Jesus Christ especially his words and his promises to us through Christ God's faithfulness is worth remembering verse 12 when they were but few in number, few indeed, and strangers in it, they wandered from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another. He allowed no one to oppress them. For their sake he rebuked kings. Do not touch my anointed ones. Do my prophets no harm. And so God really took care of Israel, warning other nations to leave them alone. Puny little Israel wasn't much to look at. They never would have had a place at the United Nations. They didn't even have their own land for many, many years, but they were still God's people. They they were not impressive at all by the world's standards. But God is not moved by how the world judges greatness. The world does not influence God, and He does not judge by the world's standards or determine who he will bless by using the world's standards either. 16. He called down famine on the land and destroyed all their supplies of food. All God had to do to create a famine was to summon one. He called and it came running. America can be thankful that God has not summoned one for us because we probably deserve it. Verse 17 And he sent a man before them, Joseph, sold as a slave. Now there was a famine in the land of Israel. But it says that Joseph was sent by God before his people and he was sold as a slave. Remember how Joseph's brothers sold him into slavery down in Egypt? Well, while they were doing that evil thing, while they were selling Joseph, God says he was sending Joseph. 
They meant it for bad. God meant it for good. Just goes to show, bad people may do bad things to God's people. But you can bet, you can bet that God is at work overruling their bad to bring about something good. 18. They bruised his feet with shackles. His neck was put in irons. Now, the story of Joseph.